<laughs> Welcome Shata. Like. Thank you very much. Karibu sana. Well, very good morning. Uh, hope, you're, <laughs> hope you're doing well wherever you are uh, watching us from. Uh, yeah. As you see, Shata just joined us. So, no, si wameona. <laughs> oh, apana, si umeingia hivi. Apana, si wameona hivi. Ukimuwa kala hizi hapo tu pond the shot. Oh, alikuwa anakutea mba ugi. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Uh, still on Shata pole sana. <coughs> Tuachane. Na niluambia. I always told you, I think <coughs> CJ will tell you biblically, yeah. you're supposed to finish strong. This is not the case for <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> Na niluambia, finishing pale. Mm. That's all that, like the proverbial wolf, I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house down. This is what it took in Europa. Oh, six. Uh, 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 oh, uh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Piga eh. Crystal Palace, Gwanza. Uh, tuta wa piga. Anyway, that's beside the point. Na CJ ya kipigwa leo. Kikombe imeenda. Kikombe imeenda. No wonder he's quiet. <laughs> Roberta supports Manchester United, so don't worry. Holy sir. Guy, you're that lost? To go sour. <laughs> Good to see all of you. <laughs> How are you doing, Bobby? Hello. I miss you guys so much. Yeah, who look Oh, man. Karibu sana. I just needed a break. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to be very intentional about <laughs> taking time off so right. that is what I was trying mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Now so far so good. So I feel born, I feel Say I feel fresh. fresh. Hey, nearly kwani me beat akili at least yeah. physically. Mm -hmm. So taking time off has really uh, I can see the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm happier. This <laughs> Shaz is still on her time off. Faki rudi asipo rudi na goodies. <laughs> So, in fact, I'll cut this clip and send it to him. He's going to be like a Ah, Shaz, you're going to be like a goodies. <laughs> and it will be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Everything is okay? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. You're, you're all right, you're ready <laughs> for the show and for tonight. <laughs> I'm always ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. I'm going to be like a good one. Yeah, <laughs> losers. Aya, Basi left to know about, well, it's an uh, interesting thing. There's a, everybody has a journey uh, to get where they, ha they have been, they, they are rather, and uh, they've come from somewhere. It's for where they've come from as well. And it's uh, quite often, unangalia watu hivu unaona, ah, this is it. I like to say you always come through and like the movie is over, the credits are rolling. And you've had great reviews of the movie, so you're like, wow, great movie. But you really don't know the the process of, you know, becoming uh, yourself. There's a book by Michelle that has that title, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so you don't know the process of becoming. Uh, so we'll start with you, Bobby. Um, you know, many people, everybody, you know, even way back then, there was this famous book, I think, by um, Rick Warren. I forget the title, but it was really famous sort of like purpose driven purpose driven life yeah. yes everybody is trying to get to their purpose find out who they are what, what do you think are some of those first steps and and then maybe after that what it was like for you but first what do you think like for somebody who wants to start to say okay i want to know who i am like the popular song by sinach says <laughs> how do you get there who oh, knowing yourself is um i i, I want to say it's very difficult but it's one of the most rewarding things that you can ever do for yourself because it's very important that you start to know even the simple things like what you like to eat or um, who you enjoy spending time with so that you're able to shape parts of your life that are going to fulfill you in the ways that you need and enrich you and just grow you and build you so I'd say that the process of getting to know yourself is very difficult but uh, you know, when we're talking about this, I was just trying to think about, you know, how did I become who I am or how did I start or like in whatever I do, whether it's the writing or the speaking or um, anything that I do. And I realized that it took for me to go through so many things that I did not like yeah. and so many things that I did not want for myself for me to be able to reach a point where I was like, okay, wait, I have to take charge now. I have to be more intentional about the things that I want for myself and actually get to know myself so that I can get to know what I want. And um, although purpose is 
innate, like it's, it's <coughs> from within yourself. I think at some point in your life, you have to um, start to take charge and you know make active decisions about who you want to be. So for me, it was, I never really knew like what I wanted to do when I grew up. Maybe where I'll end up, but I never really thought. You know, when you're a kid, you say you say things like doctor, engineer, mm, pilot, lawyer, <laughs> oh, yeah, because those are the things everyone says. Politician. <laughs> <laughs> so kenda chuo isn't of it to like what discuss, but I actually almost did law. But then when I was in uni, um, people used to check my re my my writings out, and they they encourage me. You know, you write so well, you write so well. Why don't you start a blog? And it's not something that. I ever saw myself do or I ever saw myself begin to get into but I just thought you know why not and then I started to do it and then I perfected it and it grew up to where it is so I'd say what made me become who I am is a collective is collective experiences of things that I did not want to become mm -hmm. that's what pushed me mm -hmm. yeah so you knew what you don't want to become and then you kind of like People say your parents can either show you how to be a parent and how not to be a parent. Yeah. Or yeah, something yeah. like that. So that's kind of what uh, that was for you. CJ, what about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you should have followed the oh, I, <laughs> I am breaking protocol. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, the, there's several things that um, would help you get on track. Right. Um, one is the things that you are drawn to. Mm -hmm. You can never ignore that. You know, there's certain things that will excite you. Mm -hmm. No matter your personality type, no matter where you are. For example, you see, we <coughs> come over here and uh, nearly every first conversation, there's this thing of football. Right. Uh, it draws you. Mm -hmm. But there are certain other things that will excite you or will get your attention uh, that are a bit more personal and specific to you. Those are things that you need to pay attention to. It could be music, it could be writing, it could be books, it mm -hmm. could be politics, it could be anything. Uh, they're also the kind of people <coughs> that you are drawn towards. You know, if I keep on looking at a certain kind of a person and I feel that that person is living the life I want to live, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just imagination, I'm talking about inspiration. Right. where I would see somebody and I feel that's exactly who I am. They're drawing something from within me that is deep in there. I may not have the resources. I may not be at the age and the stage to do it, but I keep on feeling that that's exactly me. The way they think, the way they process, the way they act, the way they reason, the way they structure their lives. Those are indicators of where you need to go and who you are becoming. Uh, I'd raise the issue of uh, mentorship right. as well. Uh, the first time I did public speaking, you know, my mother was a school teacher and my class teacher by the time I was in uh, the early primary, the junior primary. And um, she introduced me to two things, which was leadership and public speaking. So I remember we had this prize giving day and uh, she put me on a team that was supposed to recite a shairi. I did not even think I was interested. I didn't <laughs> think I wanted anything to do. Yeah. But that began a journey in the arts from class three that went on actively uh, up until campus. Then later on, well, I got off it because there wasn't much time or something, but it got me on something, public speaking, on the stage. And by the time I was getting done with primary school, I was already writing my own poems. You know, there's something that was stirred up. The people who mentor you, they see something within you that you may not at that particular point see, and they call it out. Now, you never should ignore that as well. Of course, the, eventually the decision will rest with you, but then you should never ignore that as well. Um, she put me into class leadership at some point, and I did not know that that was a path that was going to go on till now. Right. You know, yeah. So a few things that I'll mention. Side, side, side question. Uh, now that your mother was your class teacher, <laughs> <laughs> did you get favors? Or no. Or no. was it tougher? I'll tell you the truth. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, 
And and I normally would pick anybody who even met her later on, even when she was past retirement, mm -hmm. would still tell you she was the same farm person, very specific. Uh, she would instill discipline. My mother would not do you a favor. She would rather you fail with an E mm -hmm. than she helps you. Mm. For her, genuine E was better than a fake A. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So you, you'd you rather just fail, you know. Uh, and she did that the same thing. Even her grandchildren would tell you the same. Like, there's no favor she would mm. do. She wanted it this straight and narrow. Uh, so it sets you on a path of knowing the, uh, the importance of working for whatever. Right. Uh, you get right. yeah get it right if you don't get it right go back do it mm -hmm. and then do it again until you learn mm -hmm. yeah you gotta learn you gotta learn shut up boy wagwan hugo sawa niko best wewe naye ulifikaje ukawa hapa hivi yeah tuna wakati hiyo hamna muda hamna muda muda tumeanza kuongea ni mpaka 24 hours ushaelewa eh ama kuna mstari ni dm nilikuwa na pri nilikuwa na shata primary school and i was like oh okay yes because akaniambia ulikuwa venye ulikuwa somebody said me pale kutoka ninilo eh totally koko kiamburo alisema gotea shata sana wewe ni mse wangu ogoteka asante ogoteka yeah man so mimi eh kuguro yangu ni mainstream your principles na na both parents mm -hmm. mostly kuna time nakumbuka kwa vizuri sana nikiwa mtoto hii mother mother alikuwa na kibanda like she had a, a, a kibanda alikuwa mama mboga so siku moja akiuza mboga nikaenda hapo kando nikafungua pia mika kibanda kangu kadogo tu ka longo unaona <laughs> <laughs> kibanda 2.0 yeah, yes sasa dikaza pia mimi nimepanga tu vitu hapo chini nauza akatoka hapo kibanda cha kuja kwa hiyo yangu akaniambia nikatie mboga unaona eh and she paid me akanipa one shilling i remember she gave me one shilling and i'm wondering my mother has given me money this is it has never happened how na ajanituma kitu ajanipea akaniambia endea mafuta endea mafuta hata ama anything akanipea bob so i i i, I kept wondering I can isumbua at some point I asked her mom why did you pay me I was just playing <laughs> I can be a when you offer a service you need to be paid for it mm -hmm. you see so I she instilled that in me mm -hmm. fast forward nilikuwa nikapeleka ukambani kusomea ushago so one day we were going home with my dad we walked for 8 kilometers wow a long distance and he was talking and I'm wondering you are maunda you can afford to pay my dad we go home why are we walking he told me in this life you must learn that these things you get are privileges and you might you might end up not having these things you must work for them by yourself to be able to get these things mm -hmm. the school we went to uyo kama alikuwa ndio class mate wangu primary it's called kitonguni primary school we used to go to school bare feet una get so i'm wondering yo i'm from nairobi why am i walking bare feet to school mm. you know <laughs> then i realized I am not special than these kids that come to school bare feet. So I had to blend in and work myself towards buying myself shoes. No, no, no. Mm. Those are the principles that guided me in life. Mm -hmm. And to always question the norm. I used mm -hmm. to go to school and I would question teachers and I don't know why I question. <laughs> that hasn't changed, people. <laughs> I just want to say for the record, <laughs> that happens. It was instilled in me. <laughs> like if I see something, I, I will ask why, it's, why is it happening like this? Who said it this way? Can it be done differently? Can we achieve something different from this? So all those questions were instilled in me from a very young age. So if you, they shaped me today. All those things that happen, Saza, of course, and then somebody last saw we've all had some background um, good or bad strict or free roaming but then you don't sometimes yes it does it will come to affect you but then how does somebody then chatter their own sasa like you know come out of the shadows of where you've been and all these lessons you've learned number one if you ask me <coughs> is to forget the blame game mm. you know and and self pity most most people don't move because they they are stuck in the past and saying how how unfair the past was for them they were never given this never given that and you lament till your end mm. you see but if you wake up today and, and and realize that is entitlement that you think you are owed because this and this was not given to you 
is the day you wake up and you start living. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. You start now earning what you want. And when it's yours and you've earned it, now you can sit and say, this is the future I wanted. You know, I get the biggest problem people have is that they complain a lot and they remain rigid. You should be like water. That's what I tell people. In whatever form, if you if you took a bottle today, work a magic, that water will take the shape of that bottle. Ukieka kwa saani, itakayo saani. That is how you should be in life. Staying rigid at one point will just leave you at that point. You get, you must be adaptable to change and work yourself towards what you want to achieve, mm -hmm. not what you want to be given to you. Yeah, man. So how do you, um, Roberto, sometimes overcome some of the biases? What are you doing? But you want to stand out to go to, this is me, but you have a, I don't know if you want to call it, I don't know if you try to call it a checkered past, or you have just a, <coughs> A pass of ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Mm. But how do you come out of that? Like Shata is saying, uh, just to build on his point, like how do you come out of that and now forge your own identity? People out of Zanga, who am I? Ata yes or Luisa, who am I? Who do men say I am? <laughs> yeah. Yes, to become yourself, yeah. Um, so um, <coughs> first, I'd like to say that if you feel something within yourself, whether you could be um, looking at a billboard and one day you think, wow, it would be so nice if my face were up here. To be there. Or if you're watching someone on TV and you're thinking, I at a minute a TV one day. Mm. The fact that you've conceived it inside your mind, it means that it exists. The fact that you've thought about it means that it is possible and it can happen. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you need to do is make the decision that you want it. You're not even supposed to think at oh, sina pesa, ama si dream to, ama ndafika je uko, ama si dream da kwa je, mi si dream si jai anza, sina connection, sina nini. The simple fact that you imagine yourself in another reality or in another way, or you can see yourself, or you have vision of where you want to end up, that's enough. Because the moment you believe it. What happens is that the universe just conspires to create paths for you to lead you onto where you're supposed to end up. So you have to know what you want and believe it. And something that happens when we're born is that we're born into systems where we're taught everything we know. Everything is imposed on us. Our names, our religion, the clothes we wear, the people we talk to, the people we hang out. It was only until I started therapy a, a couple years ago that I realized Oh wow, this is not even me. Mm. You know, all these things I do, they're not even me. They were either trauma responses or um, things I've learned from people or things I enjoyed doing because my friends were doing. So I had to take a step away and start to actually think about, okay, do I really enjoy this? Or do I really like this? Or is this me? And like I said, I had to go through things that I did not like for me to start questioning is this really what I want for myself? And that's when I had to start unlearning all these things that had been imposed on my personality. And I had to start creating who Roberta actually is. Mm. Uh, when does she wake up? What does she do when she wakes up? What does she eat? What does she like? What does she... It's just decisions that I had to make within myself for myself to create the person that I am. And when I was younger, I remember um, like just I, as I was saying earlier, I remember, you know, you, you, you kind of know what you want, but it's not definitive because you don't have the experience or you've never really been to uni or school or nini, so you don't know what it is or where you're going to end up. But you kind of, you know, kind of know what you like, whether it's singing or you draw or... And you have to start honoring yourself as a person and bring all these talents and all these things that you enjoy doing out to light so that you can actually do them instead of just saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I'm going to start. Mm. I'm gonna. Cause I promise you everyone who is doing something at some point, they were not doing it. And at some point they were just as confused at some point they did not know where they were going to go next. And you know what happens with life is that it keeps throwing you curveballs, all these traumas and all these, horrible or bad experiences that you're going to go through, you start to, when you start uh, reaping the fruits of, the, of what you're sowing, you start to see, oh, wow, that needed to happen to me so that 
I could end up in this situation. Right. Or I had to go through that so I can learn this lesson. Or I had to be in this situation so that it can make me become this kind of person. So while we go through so many horrible things every day, like even Shata, he can tell the story about, you know, how he walked to school bare feet. And someone will be like, what? Mm. But you see, that's a story. Like, if he hadn't, maybe if he had shoes, it would have changed a certain aspect of his life right now. Or maybe if his mother was in Amamamboga and Hakwa knows Ayombogapo, you know, it would have changed something in him. So everything that you go through, I'm a very big believer that there's a reason and you have to start seeing the good of it. Ask yourself, when you go through something, rather than being angry and you know the blame games and mad and disappointed ask yourself what am i being taught mm. what is it that is being emphasized in this situation what is the lesson whether it's a divorce or uh, you lose a job or you lose your friend or a heartbreak or whatever situation you're in i promise you will not see it in the pain or when you're within the chaos but when you start to um harvest all the fruits of everything that you've been through, you start to see it. And that happens to me all the time. You know, I have all these stories about how I've grown up, the things I've been through, the things I've gone through, etc, etc. But ultimately, they've just made me become someone who makes better decisions, someone right. who knows themselves way better, and someone who loves the person I'm becoming. So I say everything you're going through is for a reason. It's for a reason. And also uh, on that, same not like as you're going through this stuff uh cj we are learning as well right we uh we are learning from our parents from our school from life um and then it gets to a point where now i have to make a decision okay all these things that i've i've learned so what is for me my world view when i was bugging my mom wanting to be on tv versus actually being on TV is <laughs> totally different uh, now. Uh, so how do you kind of take that, the yin and the yang, and just, you know, go ahead and try to form your own world, you be your own person? You see, anything that um, you feel curtails you from um, both the <coughs> and external freedom, right. uh, you need to do away with that. While Roberta was talking, I was just thinking about, see, by the time I was going to school, uh, every man was supposed to study sciences. And so, I mean, I was good in things that were artistic. You know, I was writing. I was a fine artist, pencil artist. Um, I realized later on that I started doing things like writing music and, and that, and I write books and I write poems and plays and all. But that was not seen as a career path at that time. Mm. So you needed to study the sciences. And I did well with that and went ahead and then got enrolled for a science course. But then I look at myself now, more than 20 something years down after college, and I'm not using that science, probably just in analytics. <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, mo most of my world yeah. is nearly in what then would be referred to as the arts, you know. So I realized that there was what was in my mind, but there's the other thing that was in my heart. Right. Just because I could pass the sciences did not mean I was supposed to do that. I would be sitting in a laboratory now, you know, just uh, work, working around uh, microscopes and, and stuff. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then my heart was into something else. And I think that is where now the balance comes in. There are things that you know, there are things you can do, but what, it, what is it that you feel when you do that, the whole of you comes alive? Mm. I'm, I'm into, I said, you know, now things like leadership. I just love to empower people. I love everything that I do. I, I talk about four E's as being my life mission to educate, to empower, to equip, and to enlighten. Mm -hmm. Everything I do falls around those four E's. I just love doing that. You sit with me over coffee, over a meal or something. It will, that conversation will go somewhere where right. it will be either empowering or enlightening or educating or something. Mm -hmm. I love disseminating information. But 
I could have, I could have gone on. <laughs> I could have gone on with that, right? And still not being fulfilled. <coughs> the element is to break all these biases and ask yourself, where do I get fulfilled? If you get fulfilled by talking on radio, go there. It doesn't matter what somebody else thinks. Right. If you get fulfilled by painting on a canvas, go right there. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. If you get fulfilled by, you know, you're going into deep spaces where people are hurt and wounded, you just want to help them. That's where you go into. Well, there's people like uh, Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. They were, we celebrate them, not because of how much they had, but because they did something that got them fulfilled. And so they did not struggle to wake up to do it. Even if you struggle at some point, you were tired like Roberta was a bit, you still want to wake up <laughs> yeah. and go back into the same thing. Mm. When you find a thing that you were meant to do, even when there is pain in it, you will always overcome that pain because there's a way purpose always overrides pain. Mm -hmm. You find yourself going back into the same thing. The cause of what you're doing becomes bigger than the cost that you need to pay mm -hmm. to do it. So many people kill who they were supposed to be and what they were meant to be. One, because of the biases around them. Two, because they found themselves good at doing something and they thought that if I'm good at doing this, I'm supposed to do it. Right. And yet, sometimes they struggle in their hearts to wake up and go and do that thing. They have the skill, they have the mind to do it, but that's not what they were born to do. Mm -hmm. So they go to it because they feel, I scored an A in physics, let me go and do engineering. Their heart is telling them, become a musician. <laughs> they feel like, no way, I can't be a musician and there's engineering right. inside, you know. Mm -hmm. So they go to it because they're good and they'll produce results but they go back home and feel very empty. Yeah. And they feel like they're dying on the inside. It, it's, it's a very interesting thing where you're succeeding at the wrong thing and dying on the inside because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Actually, it's very interesting. You have to say something. Uh -uh. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nah. well. Okay, 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 well. Interesting you say that because there's somebody who I was, I was at a restaurant and a total stranger came and started talking to me and his story was that he did engineering, but he really wanted to do law. Because apart from Kuangea Sana, clearly alikuwa na akili. And that's what he did. At 40, he decided, wait a minute, I can do this. And now he's practicing law and like like tax and everything. I don't know what kind of law that is, but these are my tax, nini, nini, these are my mm. stuff, sasa anayifanya. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> that's at 40. I've got a friend who graduated two years ago um, at 45. That's when he graduated in law. Wow. And he had tried to run from this. You know, um, he was my junior in, in campus. Mm -hmm. So that can tell you how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, <laughs> but it's only in 2020, during COVID, that the guy graduated, actually got admitted to the bar because he had graduated before, then went to the School of Law. Mm -hmm. And it's only in 2020 <laughs> he got admitted to the bar. He started practicing at 45. Now the thing, his father was a lawyer and he grew around his father a lot, but he tried to chart a different path. He right. tried politics, he tried education, he went into economics, tried everything else. Then into his 40s, he comes back to the very thing that was in him since he was a child. Mm. And so now he's really working around, you know, helping communities, which also now the economics that he studies helps him mm -hmm. as well, especially when he's dealing with community matters yeah. as well. Mm. But it's interesting. You can start that at 50. You can start that at 60. You know, you'd rather live a fulfilled life for 10 years mm -hmm. than to live a miserable life for 90, for 90. years. Yeah. yeah. Ah, There's that's... people who uh, come, up, come out with uh, bestseller books at 85. Mm. And there's a story I was reading about some lady. She'd been holding out uh, writing for so long because she just thought it wasn't lucrative and she was scared about, you know, people knowing about uh, what she wanted to do. And then in the time she grew up, women didn't really have that opportunity and the chances and she just kept you know excuses excuses and at 85 she just said you know what let me just put it out 
and I can't remember her name, but her book ended up being, you know, the best and she became really, really famous off of it. And it just puts uh, things into perspective that it doesn't really matter. Like if you have, it's like a calling. If you right. feel it within yourself, whether you're 150 or whether you're 17, all you need to do is try and be aware and make the decision. And um, I remember when I was starting out, I used to ask myself questions like, um sasa nani atasoma vitu zangu ama nani stapata views na staki hiyo attention staki watu ni dress sana so nifanye nini ama i also i actually also wanted to be a singer i used to sing in high school and so you can <laughs> sing <start now. laughs> you can do it now you can start yeah. now you can go set this can be your manager yeah man uh, I, have, I have seen CJ can impact <laughs> elevate <laughs> empower empower enlighten <laughs> and then of course with the invoice <laughs> i have a whole team <laughs> <laughs> and most people uh, in high school they thought you know, I'd end up being right. a singer. Mm. And by the way, that's what I always thought. But I was so scared of being famous because I, I didn't want people to know my face for my voice. So it was always like a d dilemma because I, I just felt like um, fans really tear you up when they, when they know you. You know, now they have mm. opinions. You have a bad voice. You have a... So those are the things I was really, really scared about. Um, so even when I was uh, getting into my writing career, I had the same sentiments, but... I was like, ah, una jua fadali na writing, si lazima ni ndeni perform. Na siko kwa screen ni kimba hizo ngoma. Si lazima ni make video, sijui video ya ngoma. I can just write and hide. So no one has to have any opinion about me. But you see what the universe does it. It doesn't matter where you end up. Like, as long as it's a thing within yourself, it just pushes you towards Words. where you're going to end up. Whether I decided to sing or write, I'm here. Yeah. And... Like those questions I used to ask myself, Sa sina pesa, ntali paje photographer, ntali paje editor, ntafanya siju nini, siku kwa na draw ku create website. I didn't know how to do all these things. And these were always the things that were holding me back. And one day I just woke up. On a just random day, it was like even a Thursday, I just woke up, I opened my laptop, I searched, how do I start a website? How do I open a blog? How do I? And I talked to my friends and I told them my dreams. I used to be scared because I didn't want 30 people to be in my business, but that day I just woke up and I talked to them and I told them, and believe it or not, everyone was just willing to help. Like the same reaction you guys had when I talked about singing, mm -hmm. everyone was like, I'll take those pictures, I'll edit for you, I'll show you how to do this, I'll create your website, I'll do this, I'll give you this, I'll give, you know, everyone was so willing to help and I ended up Nilikuwa sana juliza sana nilikuwa na ogopa nini. Mm. Nilikuwa na fikiria sita kwa na capital ya kwanza na hata sija need pesa. All I needed to do was just make the decision, As. open up my laptop and talk to my friends. So Same thing na kuimba eh? Yeah. Just open up the laptop, your friends are here. Just start writing. Just start writing. We shall do the rest. Yeah, yeah. Kuna, kuna <laughs> kitu, yeah. kuna kitu pia mtu anafaa kujua if say you've decided you want to change. Get, ama you think you need to change. <coughs> Whatever you're doing is not you. Mm. Maybe you, you will grow. Before you connect with your, let me call it purpose, before you connect with your purpose, you, you must correct the things that you think happened to you in a way that they shouldn't have or you didn't want them to. You get, for example, me, I didn't want to be on radio. I did not, I have never even a single day thought of being on radio. Hi, Fred Afune. Yes. <laughs> it was in me. Yes. Uh, in school, teachers would uh, ask me to read. Like, say, you see, there enough textbooks that kila monafunzi at kai na yaki So you would go in front of the class and read for them. So every time I kept reading, my father was on radio. So everyone kept saying, ah, you sound like your dad. Mm. You sound like your dad. But the life I was living then was not so pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Wasn't we, like your dad. We, yes, <laughs> like no, like we weren't a, a well of family. Like we were really struggling, you know. So uh, every move that we made in life was was scrutinized. Every step of the way, everything you do, is scrutiny after scrutiny. So that made me want not to be on radio. 
because I felt if this is what I will, my children will grow, go through, mm -hmm. I am going through this because of my father's name on radio, I don't want this. So what I did, I decided, because it, it, it is something in me that kept calling me and pushing me, I ended up in theater. I started doing a, a stage plays, you know, doing set books and on film acting, you get. At the end of it all, I found myself on radio. I was, I don't know how it happened, but I was, <laughs> I was called and brought on radio, mm -hmm. you see. And it was just natural because when, from day one, it looked like something that I had been doing for over 10 years. Mm. It just was natural. So the things I gathered out there are things I used, I used to, to apply the trade now. Mm. And during these periods, I also got to tell myself that I need to correct before I connect, you know. So I have corrected those things that were in my head telling me, no, don't do this, don't do that. And right now, I am good. You're doing the thing. I am doing the thing. Yeah, we are marshalling the place. Shata is also becoming a motivational speaker. <laughs> <laughs> you need to correct. Correct. Oh, you yeah, empower. <laughs> Come on. That's the truth so right we're there. We're about to start having Shata talks. <laughs> <laughs> you do that thing, man. Yeah, man. Poor life. <laughs> but also, I wanted to pick your brain, uh, because you've talked about it before, mm -hmm. about education. <laughs> Even Amu, yes. about education, like, yes, you're given an education, yes, and it is, uh, in fact, there's a, a quote, it's the mark of uh, uh, it is the mark of uh, it is the mark of an educated man to entertain a thought without actually doing it, doing it. yes. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think is the role of education in all this? Because we've talked, CJ did zoology. Mm -hmm. uh, Roberto wanted to sing. <laughs> the person who changed from economics to law, from engineering to law. So education is important, but like, what, what do you think is its, its actual role? Because that's how easy guys are saying, oh, CBC, this, this. What do you think is the actual role in becoming? The actual role of education is to open up your mind mm -hmm. for you to understand the world as it is and how to, to live with people because you don't exist in isolation. You exist around people. And this education has been given universally to everyone. So when you understand it, you understand how to live around these people. But now that one does not conform you to what you've been taught. It has opened up your mind. Now you can see things in a different way. You now start questioning things, the way they're happening, why are they happening? Is this who I am? Because people have never, actually, you ne life is so busy that you never take time to ask yourself, who am I? You know, how did I get where I am? Is this who I was supposed to be? Or am I just pushing life according to someone else's bl bl blueprint? You know, the education is supposed to give you the, the ability to think like that and to work like that. Because you, you have free thought and you can decide your destiny. Mm -hmm. You can just sit down, but also remember as you do it, that education should tell you that every action has a reaction yeah. of the same magnitude and strength. <laughs> <laughs> that is physics, you know. And every decision you make, you must you must be able to live with the consequences of your decisions. Mm. You know, if today you decided I am no longer going to be an engineer, I want to do law, you must know the changes that will happen in your life, and be ready for those changes. Don't get halfway and come back, because it's coming back to the familiar pain that you knew, because you've gone there and found unfamiliar pain. You know, you're coming back to this familiar hassle that you know and now you, you, you lose focus. When you want to start something else, probably like, could I rule it too? Could I rule it too? Yeah, that education is supposed to teach you endurance and the ability to know the actions you're taking. All right, okay, well, we will want to end it there, but not before I ask CJ one last question, because you mentioned about mentorship. Just the last one, like a how, how do you identify like a mentor? It's gonna be somebody who's doing uh, what you want to do, in a sense, or going where you want to go, or has been where you want to be, mm. then they have to be people who are secure in themselves. They are fine with what they have accomplished or not even accomplished, enough so that they will not try to stifle you. Mm. They are willing to let you lose, you know, you go. They'll teach you the foundational, they'll ground you, but they are willing to see you fly. They want you to become the best that you can become. They're more interested in you than in them. So they keep on picking up things in you, but they still give you the space to make the decisions, make your mistakes, and they don't leave. They're constant. They're a figure there, um, like a coach at the, t at the touch line, you know, keep helping you work on you to become the best that you're supposed to be. Yeah. 
All right, we want to end it there. Huh? Also, bigger people that see in you yes. what you, 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 you have not seen in you. Mm -hmm. You see Fred Afune, mm -hmm. Vincent Kimani, mm -hmm. Simalau Dajom, yeah, man. saw something I didn't see in me. Kabisa, Mimi Nigepega could be up since you're picking up. Peter Obondo, Marinda Karane, and Ivy Nam. More live. I don't know, man. Check Kama. Okay, na team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we like to end it there. Uh, I hope. I do hope you go back and rewatch this because uh, it's been quite a, uh, a good discussion. It should give you some starting points in the discovery of yourself, and I hope that you do. I hope that you, in the basis of it, I like saying this, but people have always, always people take the last part of it, but really successful people do look like you. Like if you look in the mirror, anyway, you people who are successful, they look like you, they walk like you, they wear their trousers or other things one leg at a time. So there's really no difference. The only thing is they chose to do something and they stuck to it and they continue to do it and they're consistent with it. So just keep on keeping on. In the famous words of Marshall Mathers, you can be anything you want to be. Yeah, and you can do anything you set your mind to. Watch it, Malaysia. Hapo, no, to leap way. Peace and love. Successful people look like you. Full stop. Full stop.